Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting uh, for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. John consented. So what does that mean that uh, it, is, it is necessary to fulfill all righteousness? Jesus being baptized uh, by John was necessary to fulfill all righteousness. Um, so people just speculate what that means because it's not 100% clear what that means. It doesn't really explain that anywhere else. Um, is this a part of Jesus fulfilling the law? Um, is, it, is it something else? Um, you know, personally, what I believe is that, you know, Christ the Messiah, the righteous one, is here. He's the fulfillment um, of the prophecies. John was the forerunner. He came to announce the coming of Christ and to prepare the way. And so now Christ was coming. He was actually coming. And uh, as he was baptized, it was actually revealing that he is here. It's the fulfillment of what was prophesied, of the righteousness that was prophesied. God said to Abraham, through your seed, all nations will be blessed. And uh, that's actually speaking about righteousness will come to all the nations of the world. And so that was to be fulfilled through Christ. So Christ is the fulfillment um, of all those prophecies and that through him righteousness will be um, fulfilled. We actually see in the next few verses that as Christ was baptized, um, heavens were open and it's, it's, it's like a confirmation that he is the Christ, that this is the fulfillment of, of righteousness, of, of, the prophetic, of the prophecies, that the righteous one is here, the deliverer, the savior, the anointed one, he is here. This is it, Israel. This is, it's happening now. The kingdom is at hand and righteousness is being fulfilled. You cannot fulfill it through the law, but Christ came to fulfill righteousness and to show us the way um, on how to be righteous. And that's not through works and law and Moses, but it's simply through faith in Christ and the grace of God we receive through what Jesus did on the cross for us. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Then, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Pretty epic event. Um, if you were there, you know, waiting in line to be baptized and there's this big long line and, you know, here comes Jesus and we know that John actually said, look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. And Israel's like, hey, this guy, him, um, you know, it's like he just looks like an ordinary guy. He doesn't look like some big glorious king. And, and, um, and so then he gets baptized and comes up out of the water. All of a sudden, the heavens are open. You know, what did that look like? What did that sound like? I mean, you can imagine. I mean, I believe that that literally happened. Because why? Because I believe the word of God. And um, the heavens were open and there was a mighty sound. Actually, the Spirit of God came down upon him. See, Jesus was the anointed one. And this was the anointing of God, the endorsement of God, the Spirit of God, the power of God, the fire of God was coming upon Jesus. And it says like a dove. Okay, so it wasn't a dove. A lot of people say the Holy Spirit, he's a dove and the dove of the Holy The Holy Spirit is not a dove. Okay, he's not a bird. He's the, he's the mighty powerful spirit of the living God. He's the third person of the Trinity. He is God, the Holy Spirit. He's not some little dove. Okay, but it just says like a dove. So so it's like the spirit, this this glory presence like came out of heaven. Heaven, the, the sky opened up and it was like the glory realm, the heavenly realm was there and coming out of heaven was the spirit that descended and it came and it rested upon Jesus. And um, and it rested on him and he received power from the Holy Spirit. That's when he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, and then a mighty loud voice came from heaven saying, Behold, this is my son. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And this is just wonderful. Firstly, um, this is God the Father saying that this is my son. You know, 
that Jesus is the Son of God. Basically, that's, that's, that's the prophecy fulfilled. The Messiah is here. The one that was promised, he is here. And there was a big voice from heaven endorsing Jesus, saying, this is the one. He is my son. And so Pharisees would have heard that. Israel would have heard that. So there really should have been no reason to doubt ever again whether Jesus was the son of God, the Messiah or not. Okay, this absolutely showed and proved that he was. And yet we'll see time and time again, people doubting it, even the disciples doubting it. At one stage, even John the Baptist was doubting it. Um, and, and a lot of Israel just were doubting it. But um, there should have been no doubt, should have been absolute faith. This is, this is the one. He's here. The kingdom is at hand. Let's follow Jesus. And a lot of people did believe and they followed Jesus. Um, and a lot of people struggled to believe. But they shouldn't have struggled <laughs> because they had it. And then I just love, um, it says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And this is just grace being displayed right here. Um, because, you know, before Jesus had done anything for God, Jesus hadn't started his ministry. He hadn't done anything. And God was saying, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And uh, see, religion wants to make us have to work for the father's approval, for the father's love. Um, for the Father's acceptance, but grace makes us children of God, and it and it tells us and it shows us that we already have the the love of the Father, the acceptance of the Father, the approval of the Father before we've done anything for God. Okay, we don't serve God and live for God and do all these things for God um, to try to earn His love or His blessing or His favor or His acceptance and approval. We already have those things. And so that's what grace is. That's why I love the grace of God. We're not working to try to get something that we already have. But because we have his love, because we are approved and accepted in Christ, because we already have those things, then um, our life is an overflow of those things. And the things that we do for God, you know, whether it's witnessing, evangelizing, going to church, loving people, giving generously, um, praying for the sick, whatever you do for you know, in this life for God, you're not doing it to try to get something. You're doing it because you already have his love, his approval and acceptance. And the reality is, um, here's the truth. Okay. Even if we never did another thing for God for the rest of our life, he would still love us, accept us and approve of us. And uh, because, because that's his grace. It's unconditional love and favor and blessings, unmerited favor. That is the grace of God. And so grace came through Jesus. Law came through Moses. Law, under the law, you have to earn blessing. You have to earn God's love, his favor. You've got to earn forgiveness. You've got to earn all these things. And that's why it's a heavy yoke. It's an impossible thing. No one can do it. No one can fulfill it completely. Jesus fulfilled the law and righteousness on our behalf so that we could receive it as a gift, become children of God, become accepted in Christ, and come into this place of, of sonship where God loves us, accepts us and approves us permanently every moment of every day. That's why we can have boldness in his presence. Even if we sinned and messed up, we can draw near with boldness because it's not based on what we do in our performance. It's based on the fact that we're in Christ and that we are beloved children of God. And that is so good. And this is the very thing that gives us our inner sense of personhood, of value, of importance. Um, and this is something that every person needs to understand and believe and have deep in their heart. They need to have faith and receive it deep in their heart. You are loved by God. You're accepted and you are approved by God. You don't have to go out into this world and try to do anything to get acceptance, approval, love. You know, it's, it's like when you don't have that in your heart, the love of God, the acceptance, when you don't have that in your heart, you'll look for it everywhere else and you'll try to get it from things and so people sleep around have multiple partners just to try to feel loved um, people will join gangs to try to get acceptance and approval people will go and commit all kinds of crimes and things um, just to be accepted by people um, you know and and you know because you, if, if you don't have this this settled in your heart um, you'll be insecure and you'll have this big hole and you'll be looking for it in other places. But I tell you, when you have it in your heart, when this is in your heart, I tell you, you're secure. 
you're at peace. You don't have to try to go and get it from anywhere else, but you simply just live in it and you walk in it and you'll help give it to other people and bring other people into it. And this is why I love grace so much.